Are you guys ready to get back to the treehouse build? I know I am. Today we're going to be putting up some walls. So we've got six walls to build. The first one we're going to do is the back wall. We've got the front done and the back is uh, next on tap. I've got it all built down here or at least cut. I'll kind of show you how it is, why it's done the way it is here. So everything is pre-cut, ready to go. So we've got our corner pieces right here. The back wall is going to be six feet. The front wall is going to be seven feet. So there'll be a shed roof with an overhang over the porch there. So we've got our uh, corners, we got our plywood spacers, everything laid out. This is the bottom plate, this is the top plate, meaning this is the very bottom, this is one that will sit on the top of the studs. We got a stud, stud, right here we got a stud. These are cripples, these are on the bottom, these are what go underneath the window. We've got a big window here, a corner window, it's going to be 36 by 22. We've got our header in there with our plywood spacer. We've got our uh, second corner over here with our plywood spacer. Everything ready to go. So we'll take that all up there. We'll bang it together and I'll actually pre-cut all the siding as well. All right, so this might be a little bit tricky to video up here, but I've got the frame of the wall. Uh, most of it nailed together here. I don't have the studs or the bottom plate on yet. And I'm really tight in tight and working space, so it's kind of hard. I usually like to build walls on the decking, but it's just not possible up here, so I have to kind of do what we can. So I'll set the ca camera tripod over there as far away as I can, and hopefully you can kind of see what's going on. So we've got the wall here. So here's the header where the window will be. So we'll pull this out. Treehouse building is such a different animal. All these little tricks and techniques that I just don't th you don't think about. What I'm doing now is I'm I've got a stud here that I'm just going to use as a brace to keep that wall from falling out. So toe nailing is a process of nailing at an angle like this into the corner. You do that when you can't nail up from the bottom. It's better to be able to nail up through the bottom of the stud into the butt ends, but this is totally a, a totally acceptable way. It's just. Um, not preferred if you have a choice. So this piece, this is the bottom of the window sill here. So this piece is called a cripple and it simply carries and holds the, the bottom of the window. So this is the last stud in the wall here. One thing you can do once you put a nail in is use your speed square and that's a really quick easy way to reference make sure that you're 90 degrees off your top plate. And then well, this is our last nail here. So building tree houses is a lot of work. Everything is difficult. At least it's half inch plywood and not three quarter, five eighths. So the wind has decided to kick up here when I'm doing siding. So that's always a nice holding a piece of T111 is just like holding a great big sail. Okay, so we've got our factory edges together and we look good right there. All right, so I, next thing I gotta do is cut out the window. So I've got just enough room to maybe sneak around this wall. We'll drill our hole here in the corner. And then we can use our reciprocating saw, our sawzall, uh, to cut this out on sawzalls. Hard to know sometimes which tools to purchase. Um, you can't just go with one brand. Sometimes Milwaukee's the best, sometimes DeWalt's the best. But I do know that these DeWalt reciprocating saws are exceedingly good because I used to use them in my business uh, for cutting uh, cars apart, a lot of sheet metal. And I burned up several Milwaukee's and then I went to one of these because it was on sale and the DeWalt's it surprised me, but they last outlasted the Milwaukee's. And the other thing, they've got a feature that just makes them indispensable, is you can turn the blade. It's got a dual chuck. You can turn the blade 90 degrees, which if you're working up and if you're a plumber or working in the attic or in crawl spaces or tight spaces, sometimes that's just enough to get the job done. The other ones, they didn't used to, maybe they do now, didn't do that. So we'll use a reciprocating saw very carefully. We'll cut tight along this ledger here and it'll be a little bit ragged, but that's okay because we're gonna trim all that, so. Good. 
So now we've got to make a box uh, for our window. Um, here's another trick. This is something my dad taught me, showed me how to do that he always did is for storing nails. Pretty self-explanatory, but it really works good uh, for loose nails. So we've got some two by sixes here that I ripped down to five or four inches and they will fit. We'll just need to make this box inside a box that will fit inside of the framing. So we'll just, let me knock this together real quick. I wanna share with you a trick that I had forgotten about, but it does really work. Several of my subscribers reminded me, if you take your nail, if you're gonna be nailing near the edge, it has a tendency to wanna to split the wood. So if you take your nail and you just uh, blunt the end there with a couple strikes like that with your hammer, it uh, doesn't split the wood near as bad. We'll try it right here. I've I'm grateful to be uh, reminded of that. So just doesn't take much, just a couple times there. And you can see we're right here on the edge. These two by fours, they've all been splitting pretty bad. And it does, it does work, it really does. So eight, eight out of eight nails, none of them split the edges and everything's been splitting up here. So it, it really works by dulling the head or flattening the head of those nails. Makes you wonder who figures out that stuff. It's just uh, one of those crazy things. Huh? All right, so now we can, this is our, our window box. We can put this in here and then we'll trim around it or tr trim up to it. And we can just nail our box in on all four sides. The corner of our window box here, we, we're gonna need a little what they call a reveal. This is just a little quick reference tool. It's got a 3 16 reveal. It just helps you uh, to uh, speed things along. You can use your tape measure, but 3 16 is usually what looks right. What we want is we're gonna have trim boards that cover here and here, cover up all this stuff. That's why we're not overly concerned about the, the rough opening, about the, the cutting. It's why you can use the saws all to cut the siding if it tears out a little bit because it gets a nice trim around here and then this will all be caulked in with Vulcan before the paint. So what we'll do is we'll just mark this, these reveals on all four corners here. And then we'll take our measurements and we'll go down and cut our cedar trim boards. We need to do that first. We'll trim out our window. Then we can run our bats because that's because they dead end into that window trim. Now just double check with your square one more time that we're, uh, our box is, is square so that our joints all line up on our trim board. Here's another trick you can do. If you take the sticker off your tape measure, it leaves a little spot where you can make your measurements. So for example, I need to remember these measurements, these two measurements for the trim boards. I can write them on my tape measure. It's just uh, it's one of those little time saving um, tricks. So now this is our cedar trim here. We just got the rough cut outside, which matches the siding really good. Once it's painted, you won't know that they're not the same. And I've been blunting my nails and that's been working really good to prevent any splitting. So make sure we get into the stud here, but I've just matched these up. And that way, once we get this all on here, we've got a nice 3 16 reveal in here that we can put a nice tight bead of caulk and that'll keep the water out of the siding. And same on the top. And this will be, it'll have a nice overhang over it. So this is, we'll, we'll never have a problem with this. This is a quick and dirty way to do a window. There's a lot nicer, elegant ways with a ledge and a 10 degree, 15 degree bevel and all that to keep water out. But it is a tree house and you just gotta stop. You, you could go crazy with this stuff. I don't know about other parts of the country, but uh, we use uh, for, I think the Pacific Northwest is considered about the hardest place uh, on siding or where it, there's the biggest demand because of the moisture. And so Western red cedar is always considered to be a, about the best. It's got an oil in it that just doesn't allow it to rot. It'll just last years and years. On our last, our off-grid homestead property, we had some cedars that had burned and they were snags uh, from, they were over hundred years old. And a couple of those we cut up and they were rock solid. There wasn't a bit of rot in them and they had been standing and some of them even on the ground for a hundred years. So it's a, it's a wonderful wood and nothing smells better than Western red cedar. There to be on 16 inch, well, you know. Maybe that's the, the modern, modern design. That's what we're going for there. Straight faced while I cried. 